Uh, we are live. I can, I, I can see us, Helen. We are official. So, yeah. Helen, uh, first of all, I'm going to make, thanks for being here. I'm going to make an introduction, first of all, Helen. So get, get ready for hopefully what will be a slightly blushing moment with a bit of luck. So to, to, everyone who's, to everyone that's here, Helen Matthews, one T in Matthews, please, is head of senior school PE at Dulwich College, Shanghai, Padong. Helen started her career at Isha High School in Surrey and then made the short haul switch to St. Louis School, Milan, where Helen not only taught PE, but also sat her Italian GCSE exams alongside her own students. Helen then made the long haul switch to Shanghai, where I met online, of course, Helen as a client of theeverlearner.com. Since then, I've always been struck by Helen's affability, positivity, and relentless enthusiasm. She is, as her old PGCE colleague and friend of mine, Alan Reed, told me, the quintessential PE teacher. Today, I'm going to ask Helen all about her recent experiences teaching PE in, post in the post-lockdown world and what, if any, advice she would give to UK-based teachers as our own return to school emerges on the horizon. So Helen, thank you for being here. It's really, really appreciated. We have a bit of fun, I think. I've got, I've got a daughter crawling underneath me. What are you trying to get at her? You can go, don't worry, you're not going to disturb it. So there you go, I, I said I'm in my daughter's bedroom. She's trying to crawl past as I go. So anyway, there you go. So Helen, I have a question for you. Helen, teaching PE with social distancing, it's impossible, right? I mean, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's impossible. Um, we've had to do it for the last two weeks. Uh, I think it's just not the subject that we um, formally would know it as. Uh, I think we've we're having to be extremely creative, which I think as PE teachers, we are so creative on a daily basis. Sometimes without even realising it, you know, we have crazy weather conditions that might happen during our lesson, or we have facilities taken away from us. Or and I think the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, we don't even realise how um, just how versatile we are, how solutions-focused we are. And I think that there is no difference here. I think that the difference is that because you've got this great big warning about it. Um, not to mention all of the other um, quite scary factors that come with it as well. Um, I think that it gives us time to really um, overthink it, maybe in a, in a way that makes us feel like I can't do it, I can't do it, it's impossible, it's just impossible. Um, but actually every single PE teacher out there can 100% do it for sure. That's great. And uh, give, give us a bit of insight into, into your structure and your days, Helen. What does, what does school actually look and feel like to you at the moment? Sure. So um, just to give a bit of uh, back information that we started back two weeks ago um, and we've been doing a staggered start. So uh, two weeks on uh, the very first Monday, we had year 10 come back, first of all. On the Wednesday, we had year 12 and on the Thursday, we had year nine. We then kept it that way for the whole of last week. Today, we had year seven. Tomorrow, we get year eight. So it's been an, an extremely staggered start. And I think for everybody to get used to this because it's a sensationally different way of life at school um, for everyone like staff and students um, some of the key changes that our school made um, fundamentally and and you guys have to sort of also understand that we are exceptionally governed by local governments um, mm -hmm. actually a lot of the rulings that are coming into play for us they're not just common sense things they're not guidelines they're actually hardcore official official rules that as an international school in China, we have to be extremely careful um, that we are sticking to them in case we're inspected. Um, our school field, for example, the fences are really, really low. Um, and so everybody can see in the general public walking by, anybody that was um, in authority walking by, kind of wanting to take a look. It's very easy, particularly from a P context, to see what we are doing. <clears throat> So anyway, so our rules and regulations are not set by school. They're set by what's called SMEC, which is um, like a, it's a part of the government, essentially, that's the, the, the educational um, commission. And the problem we have is that those rules and regulations are kind of changing almost on a daily basis, which is extremely exhausting and really hard to keep up with. Um, but to give you a bit of an overview, like what we were told when we had to, we went in for a staff briefing three weeks ago, and that's when we were told the news, right, you're going back next week. And um, the, the, key, the key things, first of all, were temperature checks. So um, temperature checks are a key part of the school day. Um, they're done during tutor time. We've had to create a tutor time during um, either side of lunchtime um, to 
take temperatures again of, of our tutees and get them officially logged and uploaded. Um, we're temperature checked before we get onto school. We have health forms that we have to complete before we get onto, onto school site. There's an online health form. That if we haven't completed it by 7 a.m., we're not allowed on campus. Um, is, that about have... you? is that about you, Helen? Is that, is that effectively yeah. saying, I, I, Helen, I'm healthy? Um, essentially, essentially. Mm. Like you're not allowed to have your temperatures, not allowed to be 37.3 or above. If it is, you're not allowed on school campus at all. We have to walk through thermal scanners to get on the school site. We also have to, and this is just to get on school site in the morning, we also have to, um, they've got a, obviously I know that the NHS is coming up with this tracking app that I think is being piloted in the Isle of Wight, but we've had that since the day, since about eight, nine, ten weeks ago, it's been in existence here, if not longer, and we basically have to scan a QR code and um, it, it loads up and then it comes up with either a green, a yellow or a red QR code with your name and your passport number. Um, and it has to be green for you to be able to go onto school site. Um, if it's yellow or red, it means that you've come into contact with someone that has later been diagnosed with COVID or, um, you know, some sort of medical issue there. And, ju and just so to clarify, just to, big. just to clarify on the app side, that is to do with your geographical, your effectively your GPS proximity to someone who's got, a, who's a confirmed case. Is that right? It's that it's if you've left Shanghai, obviously it's also a GPS. So, um, you know, the, the quarantine is really strict here. So if you have left Shanghai, I think only really recently it's just been lifted domestically. Um, but, you know, as soon as everyone arrived back into Shanghai, when we'd all kind of been away, uh, most people's QR codes could be read because it basically means that you've been out of the country and you haven't self-isolated for 14 days. Um, so we have to declare this QR code every day. We have to load it up in front of the guards so that they can see that it's, not a screenshot it's a live you know scan oh. qr code so this is all just to get on on school sites um i've got this piece of paper that i have my temperatures on they take my temperature again i have to have it signed by um we've got a, like a temperature tree who takes can I, can I just, so, sorry to interrupt, sorry to interrupt <laughs> can, I, can, I, can i just check who they are who, who are the people administering this so it's it's smec who SMEC. is the yeah um, that they're the ones that we had to have a big inspection before school was allowed to open um, and you know with that came all the all of these things had to be in place um, you know the school site obviously had to be um, not only cleaned within an inch of its life but also there had to be systems set up that it could be cleaned regularly throughout the school day okay. extremely like in theory at the moment our PE facilities are meant to be cleaned after every single use um, that's been okay up till now how that will work in um even by the end of this week i'm not really sure when junior school will come back as well um so you know there's some logistical things there but we're very lucky because we have um unlike in the uk and a lot of schools where you have sort of cleaning companies that come in at the end of the day we have the, the normal setup for us is that we have we call them ies and they're um just an army of cleaners that are on site all day every day and all the, and they just clean all day every day that's what they do in normal life whereas now it's just been ramped up that you know yeah. today i was working at my desk and the ie came to my desk and i had to lift everything up and she disinfected my desk and wiped it all down um and so you know they they're they're really really on it even more than ever so well, that's, that's amazing. So, so let's ta let's take a piece of equipment in the sports hall or in the gym or, or even that's going out on the field, say. Effectively, there it, it gets you, someone throws a javelin, someone throws a ball, someone that sort of thing. And after each usage of that, it's being sanitised. Yeah, so this is one of our issues. We, at the moment, we fundamentally can't use equipment. I mean, we've been okay. told that. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's a bit of a sort of no-brainer at this stage anyway for everyone if it's it, they, we can't share equipment and we don't have you know 25 javelins to go around the whole class um the the lot the rule is for us is that a, a student can share equipment if in between the share like you're saying it can be sanitized it can be disinfected however the student is not allowed to do that so we can't give a bottle of sanitizer between two students and one javelin that yeah. can't happen it's got to be an adult or a teacher that does the disinfecting so ultimately um we've got i've got a, an example of where we do use equipment but ultimately we're just not using equipment at the moment yeah. um does that, does, that lay, so does that lend itself to sort of health and fitness related type experiences are you tending to do running based athletics based type events is that where it takes you 
Yeah, so you know, we've been we've been back to two weeks, but actually, um, because of the nature of the staggered start and, and students returning, um, we haven't actually had a huge number of PE lessons. In the first week, we only had three lessons because of the nature of when they started back versus when their PE lesson falls. Um, and last week, we definitely probably had about seven lessons, I guess. So I'm certainly not the master of any trait right now. I'm just sharing with you guys, you know, our experience. But um, we definitely in that first week you know, we stepped into this just being, oh my goodness, like, what, what does this look like? I mean, we, we get it on the one hand, um, but we essentially in that first week, I think it was more about all of us getting used to it. So the students and the staff um, and in the PE context of them thinking that they're coming back to school and probably imagining that it's going to be very normal, but it's different. So we actually in that first week, we set up um, kind of a mini, a mini carousel. So we actually did, um, we had a kind of cardio, uh, station we had a track a track printed um and the students were allowed to go in pairs but they had to stay in lanes one and three they had to have lane two um we're here we're more about the one meter social distancing not two so, interestingly is, is um, that is that china as a whole um helen they would tend to be about is that almost like the internal national policy yeah so, I mean, it does it does um you do hear about two meters but um in school it's definitely only one meter even when they put the social distancing tape outside school, um, you know, because obviously the whole rigmarole of getting into school can take so long that a queue can form, but they're only one meter apart as well. Um, so we, yeah, we set up the, we had the track and we had a kind of cardio station. And again, they were allowed to go in pairs, uh, but they had to have lane two, three. Um, and then we had a, in the center of the track, we had um, an orange grid. So we just had a load of orange cones all put down that were all spaced a meter apart. And there was a teacher there that was doing a sort of yoga stretching Thank flexibility you. session. And then we had a final grid in a different color. And that was um, kind of strength work, but, you know, all based on sort of body weight. And the students just did 10, 15 minutes at each station. We had the music outside. We just wheeled a speaker out and we just tried to make it as fun as we could. Now, you know, in our context as well, there's some things that are slightly different. Um, you know, for some of our students, they genuinely haven't left their apartment for yeah, maybe three months. Yeah. You know, we didn't have the exercise hour that you guys were allowed. Um, and don't get me wrong, restrictions have been um, sensationally lifted uh, for probably the last, well, for a long time, like eight, nine weeks. But there is fear, as there is in the UK as well. And, and a lot of local families, um, uh, Chinese nationals have really, they're the ones that have chosen just not to leave home or they won't let their, stu their children leave home. Um, and even if they can leave home, like because of the nature of Shanghai, all the sports facilities are closed and we don't have big open playing fields or places for kids to just go and kick a ball around and run. And, you know, it's very kind of dense and built up and our students rely on school sport pretty much a hundred percent. There isn't really anything outside of school. So we have this real kind of duty to be able to provide the best of what we can to our students because otherwise a lot of them live in apartments we don't have gardens um so you know our situation is a little different there as well so we just wanted to really make it fun we know that fitness isn't the number one thing that these guys want to do but they're finally back together there's the social element and we just were trying to make that's why when it was on the track we weren't making it any serious cardio work we we allowed, we said to the students, listen, if you want to do something serious, just take the fifth lane and just, you know, just do something. If you want to run, we can, we can help you. We can time you. We can, um, you know, do anything you want. Or if you want, by all means, just walk and chat to your friends. Uh, we just wanted to get them moving and get them active because some of these students have done nothing and not for any fault of their own for a long time. Um, so anyway, that was pretty much what our first week looked like so we were sort of rolling out this carousel we only had three lessons that week um and then last week we had a number of interesting things we obviously um suffer from high pollution days here yep. so on the, on the monday a week ago we had a, what we call a purple pollution day where it was super high pollution uh, so we had to go indoors um we were told at that stage and this rule keeps changing all the time but we were told that pe indoors the students have to wear masks and wow. that's a real game changer. That's a massive is that, game changer. Is that, is that, I mean, have, have you done that yet, Helen? Have you had pee indoors in masks? Is that, and is, yeah, I mean, what, yeah. what's the, physiologically, how, how is that? Because I struggle yeah. just to do the shopping in a mask. It's, um, it's, it's so horrible. And actually there's been, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but there's been um, two deaths in China um, only a couple of weeks ago. 
uh, from students being made to run round and round and round a track that we're seeing a much more um, intense um, activity than what we would do with them but they died and there's a lot of um, there's actually a lot of information coming out at the moment that actually it quite possibly is not a safe thing for these students to be wearing masks indoors so not even indoors sorry outside as well just masks and physical activity just isn't a good combination you know you're just reducing the amount of oxygen you're taking in um, not to mention I mean I feel lightheaded just talking in it you know, because I'm trying to project my voice like you normally would and just got this bit of cloth in the way and it's it's really horrible. So um, that was, I ended up that day doing a bit of a dance class um, because I obviously didn't want to do something that made them really um, kind of out of breath with anything that was kind of cardio intense. But I also didn't want to do anything like yoga, etc. indoors because as much as I could do it and I would have done it, um, you know, we can't use mats and some of these guys, some of these guys are really funny about getting their hands and stuff on the floor because they're still some of them are still so hyper aware of the situation that's, that's quite interesting right because that that point is something i think all teachers should reflect on because it, this is not just the perceived fear from the teacher or the or the protocol the teachers feeling that the students themselves are going to bring in their own perception their own fear of what it is that they're being asked to do that must be something you're acu acutely aware of i'd imagine yeah absolutely i mean also um so we've last week we had the mask rule changed three times um wow. it's just things that we have to keep up with are just painful um outside they don't have to wear masks indoors to this to, to today they don't have to wear masks which is amazing but that could change again tomorrow um but you know even without the mask wearing when we've been outside i've said to the students you know i'm not forcing you to take your mask off like if you want to wear it um because yeah. you feel more comfortable wearing it then absolutely go for it but um, we need to maybe modify what you do and you need to be so aware of the way that you're feeling um, and you need to just absolutely stop if you start to feel a bit lightheaded. So, you know, I'm trying to let these guys make their own decisions. And, you know, again, you know, culturally, um, different students will have different perceptions of what they do and don't want absolutely. to do. Um, so it's trying to, um, yes, yeah, so it's trying to cater for all of those. Yeah cultural issues that you know everybody's like I find it really interesting speaking to my friends back in the UK because everyone's so different and that some of the some of my friends that I speak to that never ever would have thought this of them and I don't mean it in any derogatory sense at all but they're absolutely terrified yeah. of the coronavirus and the situation and so you know I would imagine that their children as a result will go in being absolutely terrified so it's kind of you know your experiences at home and how your family feel about it some families are really relaxed about it and you know, you're just dealing with a multitude of different emotions that we have to be really sensitive to, despite what our own um, feelings are about the situation. I think we just need to be, it's like differentiating but on a whole new level, <laughs> you know. And I think, that's a, I think that's a really important point you make there, because I think a lot of structures in schools are based around compulsion, aren't they? The teacher has the authority and the teacher can effectively authorise or, or, or veto or ban certain things from taking place. I think what you're suggesting there is quite interesting because people are going to bring their own personal interpretations and, and fear levels into this environment and teachers are going to need to be able to cater for that. Now, in the UK, as far as I understand it, the guidance is that no masks or no PP will be worn by any one within a school unless they're unless they are symptomatic or have tested positive for covid now with that in mind it's fair to assume that most people won't wear a mask but what uh, the question i'll throw out rhetorically to teachers here is well what if a student wants to what do we do in that what if a student chooses they want to wear a mask during our athletics 800 meters lesson for example and i think that's kind of what you're touching on there isn't it yeah, I, and I think I think we're in a really um, a really unique time, mm. and I think that actually we we have to be we just have to be sensitive, you know. I, ju I just I can't help but think that, um, and you know, just and and whether there is a provision that can be made that so one of the things that we are now looking now that we're basically getting the whole school community back as of this week, we're now going to be offering um, every year group um, we're going to be offering um, projects. Um, and with that in mind, they can not only sort of tailor their PE curriculum into a, a vague direction of maybe what they would like out of the out of the Sorry, sorry, Helen, that was my ignore that. I managed to I was uh, I managed to click into the actual um, the, the the live session there and turn the volume on. Sorry, my mistake. Carry on. <laughs> um, but I think that maybe it 
by offering options, if schools are able to do that, would they even agree with this? Um, it might allow students to opt into something that they feel more comfortable doing as well in terms of, you know, if you've got a student that knows they don't want to wear, that they want to wear their mask, they might choose something that is of the, the kind of lower um, intensity variety yeah. of activity. Um, yeah. And, you know, I just think it, it just offers... Um, a bit of choice both in terms of um preference but also to do with all that all that we've just been speaking about um so we're looking at at the moment we haven't started it yet we're rolling it out this week um we are so we've got the situation that actually we we still have teachers trapped abroad um yeah, because as i was explaining earlier we got caught off guard with all this coronavirus you know we were all away on holiday and most of our students were away as well and this all broke out and we weren't allowed to go back to china so we've actually still got um a decent percentage of our students still trapped abroad uh, we've got 15 15 or 17 teachers in senior school still trapped abroad because they closed the borders to china weeks and weeks and weeks ago and so people just couldn't get back in um so we're actually uh, working with year groups that are a little smaller than what uh, we would normally have so we um at the moment for year sevens we normally would have six classes come down to us at once but now we've only got four um so we are offering up um to year seven we're offering up a dance project we're offering up a fitness project but with the idea being that you know reflecting on uh, what's just happened um you know for particularly for again for our students a lot of them were trapped in apartments or um trapped but they were essentially locked down and quarantined and couldn't go out and so it's looking at you know did you did you have the the tools did you actually have the ability to be able to coordinate or understand how to run your own fitness sessions or how to sort of look after yourself in a in a in a, in a physical and healthy sense can, so can i just pick up can i just pick up on that helen because i mean in, in a in a in a way that perhaps we haven't perceived before really you're it's, you, could we summarize that as lifelong learning or the developing the behavior of lifelong learning in, in, in an apartment, in a lockdown almost? I mean, you're, it's actually a really interesting skill. Well, because also, let's face it, you know, we, we're we under a threat of a second wave. Like yeah, there's a legacy, yeah. And so, you know, I think that we would be doing our students an injustice not to be able to prepare them or give them the option to prepare them for that. Um, and so offering up uh, our projects at the moment, we've only got five weeks left of term. Um, so we haven't got a great deal of time. So we're actually looking at three weeks of them doing something project based. So they dip into something that, you know, interests them. Um, and because we want to re-engage these students with PE as well. Online learning has been, it's been fine, but it's not the real deal for PE at all. You know, so we want to really try and, and get them back on board and try and raise the profile yeah. of our subjects and try to, you know, um, yeah so we're um yeah i just think it would be a real injustice if we didn't offer them six for the fitness pathway or the project it's looking at you know six very different ways of um coordinating their own fitness sessions and trying to give them you know that whole educational side of it that um you know we do we do absolutely endeavor to do in real lessons in real lessons normal you know curriculum time but actually this is this has got a different edge to it because it feels more real than ever i think whenever we've done fitness things before it is real but this has just got this whole other layer of yeah. sincerity behind it and there is a reality that all of our students are aware of that it could happen again um you know we're not quite out of it just yet and you know they'll have all had their experiences of trying to um maybe work out home and find it difficult or maybe they just didn't know where to start or maybe they weren't interested and you know so many things so fitness um will be a project dance will be a project with a sort of outcome of um a bit of choreography um athletics will be a project but with the focus of um sprinting and jumping we obviously can't do the throwing and they they understand that so we'll be running a sort of athletics clinic um and doing a lot of the stuff that you know we sort of could do normally it's just taking on to, into account the social distancing we actually did um a, a really a really brief athletics carousel last week with one of our year groups as a kind of trial and we you know we still actually had ipads outside that are on the video delay kids would definitely yeah. need to touch anything and they were doing their long jumps and we had it all we, we had we got two pits and we had some practice jumps going on they were all socially distanced and they got into this quite nice little carousel we had sprinting and then we had a little plyometric session going on and it kind of worked really nicely actually um but again we're gonna let, we're gonna let kids opt into it you know because some think, love yeah. athletics 
That's really interesting. I've got a couple of questions I want to I want to put to you from uh, from the Facebook group. We've got a real nice audience as well here. A couple of shout outs first from uh, first one from Laurie Lee Payne. Hi Laurie Lee, great to see you. I've got a question coming for you in a second. Carl Bailey as well got an interesting question which we've touched on, but I'll come back to. I want to pick up initially the question from Luke Tebber. Luke's uh, let me get this right. Luke, Luke's in East Leak, just south of Nottingham. Great guy. We've met Luke. Luke and I have even shared a parental presentation evening together. We didn't even plan it, did we, Luke? But it kind of turned out that way. But Luke's question is a very practical one, which comes down to you know you mentioned before about the four groups rather than six come down together at the moment down to PE Luke's question is how does the, this impact PE in changing and changing facilities for lessons how are you managing that they don't get changed so they, they come change. to the PE kit that's another like there's there's actually a load of changes in school that I didn't kind of even um, go through for you guys but um changing they come to school in their PE kit on PE so, so, so uniform has been relaxed effectively they've got to they've got to wear something which allows movement basically they have to wear their PE kit and okay, um, so you know and the, they're, they're pretty good about that actually um and you know like we're actually cashing in on a bit more extra PE time with them which is which is really great at first that, that felt a bit oh my goodness we don't know what to do with them like this seems really ironic we wanted more PE time with them forever yeah. and now we're getting it and we don't know what to do with them you know <laughs> purple pollution day inside the masks on i don't want this extra time um but um but yeah and that's been working um that's been working really well um, so can i just clarify i just clarify that with you helen so when when the student has a day that features a p lesson they come in p e kit or they come every day in p e kit no sorry just just the days they have p e got you okay so on the days they got PE they're coming in in their, their polo and their and their shorts and trackies or whatever it happens to be right okay got you okay that's that that, that makes a lot of sense I guess I guess for a lot of schools the decision that one will, be, will come down to what is the PE kit now I can imagine that in a in, in a school where the PE kit is very well developed and includes a, a jacket and a shell and a tracksuit bottoms a hoodie you've got options there right I guess if your PE kit is a is a short pair of shorts or, or a, a score for example and a polo shirt you've got the weather aspects to consider i suppose there um another question i mean this is one from carl bailey as well he, he says here being mindful of the barriers relating to use of equipment which is something we won't seem to be able to get away with uh, at present what would you say has been the quality and experience of lessons the students have have actually received do you think i, I guess the question from there carl is where in terms of what you've been able to put out is the quality equivalent to what you were doing before? Higher, lower, significantly lower? How would you how would you judge that? That's a really interesting question. And I have to admit that we're still, we are really still in the infancy of all of this. Of we're course. still very much figuring it out. I mean, we haven't even done, I think we've only just gone past 10 lessons. Yeah. Um, and because of all our constant rule changes from above, um, you know, we are constantly having to go back to the drawing board and almost rip up our plans and, and, and start again because we get told things like, you know, um, we were, we're, we're governed by ratios as well. So we can only have 25 students in a space. We've been trying to define as a PE department, well, what is a space? Is our field a space? Yeah. And we had it confirmed on Tuesday evening that um, we're definitely allowed four lots of 25 out in the field in separate areas. So just let me, um, pick, up, just let me pick up on that, Helen. So, so could you just give us a, a rough approximation of the, of the scale of the field? Is it one football pitch? Is it three? Is it, I mean, how, how big is it? Um, yeah, I mean it's a it's a full size rugby pitch. It's not um, not enormous, but it's big enough. You know, we can comfortably have four lessons out there comfortably. So, um, so if, in terms of the guidance that you've got at the moment, would it be fair for colleagues to hear that as a quarter of a rugby pitch for twenty five students is approximately what you're working with? I mean, uh, it wouldn't yeah, necessarily be rectangular, of course, but sure. yeah, sure. Yeah, um, well, so we were originally told four lots of 25 Tuesday night. That was confirmed by our bursa and by head of college. And then um, Wednesday, we did loads of planning to get ready for this week. And by Thursday morning, we were told, actually, no, the rules have changed again. One group, one group of 25 on the field. So it's not, so, so you had four, yeah. now it's... Yeah, two days later, they changed it to just one. Um, luckily for us, we've got two um, very decent gym spaces. But yeah. again, you know, that's obviously one group in each. We, they opened our pool last Monday. Uh, we're exceptionally lucky with, with our um, facilities that we have, really lucky. Um, but they opened our pool area to the point that staff were allowed to swim last week. And then by Friday, they closed it and said, it's too dangerous. It's not actually, um, it's now not deemed safe. So we'd, we'd written that into our potential projects, you know, offering up aquatics options, 
but now that's gone we can't use that so you know it's just so we're just constantly um trying to we might have a, what we think is a, a quite a good plan and action ready for a lesson and then we get told all yeah. these changes happen again so in terms of, i feel like i haven't answered the question about the quality of the lesson and it's an interesting one because i think that we're still we're still scrambling a little bit at times because of these constant changes we're trying to create something that is as high quality as it can be and i think everything is going to really properly roll out for us this week i think that um for the last two weeks there's definitely been a novelty of being back um you know for the students they've been excited to be part of it they've certainly really engaged like i said you know fitness normally they would moan about doing things like that and they've just really kind of lapped it up and it's just been really nice um good. and i think that you know i've done a couple of dance sessions and they've been so excited but i don't know if that's just because they haven't done anything for so yeah. long and i want even kids in the uk just because they're allowed out to do exercise they may they wouldn't have done things like this where they're in a group and you know doing things together even if they are socially distanced but i think that i think i think it's hard i think naturally for most PE teachers we're going to feel like there is a a quality that is lost yeah, of course but i think it just raises the bar for us to be able to engage these students in just a very different way and it is so different um but i don't think there's any reason for it to be lesser quality and i would like to think that as we start to roll these projects out it's like anything we'll just get to grips with it we'll get to grips with you know what we can and can't do and we will we're all aiming to have a really significant outcome at the end of these six lessons so there's a there is a, a purpose to these projects because what one of the things that i was finding particularly in the first week was like i was just doing lessons just because i was just trying to get through the lesson and it just felt so like just felt a bit meaningless particularly when we did the fitness carousels sure they were fine but it just felt a means to an end okay right we've got p now what we're we going to do um but it was all about us really getting used to it and i think that's one of the really key things i think that you know, people have time right now to start thinking about this. You know, it's inevitable they're going to go back at some point, whenever that is. Um, but I think that it is okay to go back to school um, and have a bit of a transition period where you figure it out. You know, I don't think everyone needs to be the master of this strange, absolutely sort of archaic PE and archaic teaching. Like our classroom teachers aren't meant to come away from their desk. They've got to stay behind their desk. They can go to the whiteboard at most, oh. but they can't wander around the room. There's no group work. Like it's archaic, and it's everybody's developing extremely new habits. Um, I want. I want. I want to come to the classroom in a second, Helen. Can I? Can I just bring a point? Can I just bring out a point here that I think is really useful for people to hear. One of the things I'm hearing from you, Helen, is by all means plan and imagine and structure in your mind how you think it's going to play out. But I think what I'm hearing for you is don't put tens and tens of hours work into a rigid, structured plan that could well get obliterated after 24 hours because the rules change. And I think that might be useful for people to hear. Uh, yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, it's hard because I don't know what, what um, I don't know what the, the, the set of rules or what the rule, you know, will be like for you guys like for us we're extremely under the spotlight extremely yeah. and i don't think for a second it will be like that for you but you will obviously have guidelines and mm. you will have um your own sort of um just the whole common sense and the, and the fact that you're trying to protect these students you know that that ultimately you're going to go back and it's such an unknown and um you know you, you, you're going to be trying to do your absolute utmost to protect them and protect yourself um and, and i think that's a really key part so I just think it's such a learning curve that yeah. um, it's great to generate the idea. It really is, but I think that um, you know you've got to you've got to get the students on board as well. Like one of the things that I've been trying to do is just trying to be really transparent with the students and making sure that they know that this is not us and this this is us not wanting to give them equipment and us not wanting it's it's literally you know not giving them too much information that they're scared by it, but it's just. Um, I, I feel like the groups that we've spoken to so far, you know, year 12s, et cetera, that um, because each time year 12 have come to us at the moment, the rules have changed. So, you know, they're trying to keep up with us and I have to, it's hard because you look like, you look like the, the person that's being um, a bit of a fool because it's like you're changing the rules and, you know, we've kind of explained them on a mature level, you know, we're being governed and every day it's changing. We just need you to work with us and you, you just have to know we are trying to do everything in our power to make this as enjoyable with the crazy parameters that we are that we are facing 
Yeah. Um, and I think I've got a question here from Phil Mace and Lisa Marie and Jack Dandola and Laurel. I'm going to come back to your questions as well. But uh, Phil Mace has said something interesting off the back of that. He says, what is the morale like in your department? Having to plan the modes of work, which can change at little notice, notice must be debilitating. How are you managing this? Enjoying the challenge or pulling your hair out? <laughs> um yeah I, i've had i've had moments of i've had moments of all so we've actually got three of our peer department that are trapped abroad so we're a, we're a diminished oh, department wow. as well. um so there should be 11 of us um there's three of us at the moment that are back on site um because we're, we're um it's all a bit complicated but because we're a big international school we have a junior school and an infant school essentially on the same campus and yeah. so we we do teach a little bit cross phase but we do have our our kind of um you know like i'm definitely senior school i only teach one lesson in junior school just because they're they they need that that topping up um so the, the only three senior school teachers that are back like we are in school and um yeah it's been it's been really interesting um we have definitely felt excited when we've had breakthrough moments of um coming up with a new idea or when things feel like they're falling into place or if we're just told something like they don't have to wear masks indoors anymore it's such a celebration so we're celebrating the really small things and we've come up with some you know really kind of ideas that have come from silliness but actually then turned real like we've started playing and um, we introduced to year 12 playing um t-ball so um you know sort of baseball but with um kind of like lacrosse sticks mm -hmm. so they don't touch the equipment and then we've got enough lacrosse sticks they're just like the plastic ones they're just we've even just got like the cradle part the basket uh, it was actually like from i think the junior school store cupboard but you know we kind of came up with this plan and and you know so we, we got excited about that and um, the day that it all got basically ripped up and everything got taken away um i absolutely had a moment of like i just this is just exhausting it's infuriating it's tedious you know, I don't want to be sitting here all the time, like replanning and replanning and replanning. So, you know, and I think that's only human to feel like that. Um, but I so, think you then kind of keep, you sort of, we get ourselves back together again. Um, and uh, it's, it's a, definitely a bit of an up and down journey. There's definitely been more ups than downs because I think that we've, we've worked really nicely. And it's been interesting going from a really big department of 11 of us to just three of us at the moment. And actually, I think that that's been a really interesting dynamic that it's been really, um, I think we've been way more productive as a three. Um, you know, we're busier for sure. Um, but in terms of meetings and generating ideas, it's just felt so much more productive. And you yeah. know, there's been there's been some really interesting, nice things that have come out of it. Yeah, I do like the department. It's just a dynamic thing. You know, just number of people. Yeah, it's it's normal, right? I, when ideas get dispersed and shared, I mean, some sometimes just having fewer voices, although you might not get all of the ideas, can be can be quite efficient. We got we got a question from Lisa Marie and also Jack Dandolo. Uh, Jack Dandolo, uh, uh, not far from Luke Tebbit, actually, but this time Jack's in Leicestershire. They've asked really about timetable shifts and with the temperature checks that you're having to do and the sanitization that's going on with your. Uh, how did you say with your? Did you refer to them as IEs? I think you did. You say them. Guys with them. Yeah, oh, got you. So with, with those guys um, doing that sanitization process, how has that actually affected the timetable? Has, has, have there been significant shifts? Um, so the school timetable essentially changed before we went back. So we used to finish at 3.30 and now yep. we finish at 4.30 got you. Um, with no extra lessons. It's basically a 15 minute transition between every single lesson. Um, there's you. a one-way system in school. So, um, but the students are also encouraged to our school canteen is quite central in the whole school building and they're actually encouraged to go for a walk and to go and grab water and to go if they want to go buy a snack from the canteen like they can actually do all of that and the idea is just trying to disperse the school around the campus before they get to their um, next lesson so the day is really drawn out um we used to have an hour for lunch we now have an hour and a half because the first 15 minutes year seven eight and nine have to go back to their tutor bases and get temperature checked and we hold them there for 15 minutes so that the congestion in the canteen can die down can i just check and sorry then, to, sorry to interrupt helen can i just check on that i meant to ask before with the temperature checks who's actually implement are you doing that yourself yeah so, so we all have it's my but, new piece of equipment with got, animation. but what is that like one of those is, is it almost like one of those gun things it looks like a glue gun yeah got yeah you. how do you feel about that uh, listen, that's like, that's real normal life here for us. That doesn't, yeah. um, 
you get temperature checked walking into Starbucks. You get temperature checked walking back onto your housing compound. I mean, it's just my one year old puts her arm out to get temperature. Like it's just, it's so normal. Um, to be honest, I feel like it's a bit of a, um, it's just done just because like some people don't even look at it, you know, like the guards will do it, but they don't look at the actual temperature. But sometimes the temperatures are ludicrous. They come out to like 32 or something. Um, so anyway, yeah, we're, we're all armed with a, with a gun and um we have to we just take that with us like i i we all have responsibilities within the staff as well so i've got my department that i have to take their temperatures during the day and i have to log it online officially um so yeah and the other thing actually um just while we're on the canteen thing uh what they did in our canteen now again we're very fortunate our canteen is pretty um new it had a big renovation a while ago and it's and it's we went from a really um tiny one to now a really massive one um but it's set up like an exam so um we basically have these uh they're like exam dividers they use them in our maths um department and they get put on the table and you know it's basically just a, a block of wood that divides you to the next person well anyway they're all down in the canteen on every single table um, and not only that every single table faces the same direction so there's nobody facing each other like everybody faces the same direction and the idea is it's the only time of the day when um, students are allowed to take their mask off aside from being in pe outside yeah. they take their mask off um and they have to eat in silence they're not allowed to speak so because oh. there's still you know, a theory about things traveling through the air etc so yeah. so lunchtime is like an exam <laughs> Wow, it's, it's, it's remarkable. I, I'd sort of imagined almost that people would have food brought to them, but it sounds like it's, it's, not, quite the, it's not quite the model. We used to have um, lots of different stations in the canteen. Um, oh. Again, it's really amazing, but now there's only three, and they're the furthest three from each other, like in a massive triangle. And before you walk into the canteen, you essentially need to know which station it is that you're going to go to. So it's either vegetarian, it's Western, or it's Chinese, and you have to make that decision. You go straight to that area and when you get your food there's no you know what people did before just found their table with all their friends and sat down you have to sit at the tables that are directly in front of that station that you went to so um yeah I, I, I want to talk about classroom remember two, two things first of all I'm feeling really bad for Laura Lee Payne I, I know you meant, put a comment Laura Lee but I kind of lost it on the thread and I can't find it if you're able to repost it or remind me that would be brilliant if you're in a position to uh, second one and I I feel slightly bad before I ask this question, um, Helen. So feel free if you don't want to answer this. I understand, given you know you've got to consider your own point. So, but I wanted to ask you how safe you feel personally, and how you uh, is that something you're in a position to to, to describe? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, I feel really safe. Mm. I do feel really safe. Um, now, you know, I was I was explaining to you a little bit earlier James that you know our situation in Shanghai is um is, is really quite different and um and actually the cases are are very 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 low um and I know there's obviously a lot of um thing around that but whether sorry I did that thing again I was, I'm so sorry <laughs> uh, forgive me I'm absolutely rubbish at this I um I tried to I tried to click on a comment to answer something for somebody and managed to <laughs> manage to click on the actual video anyway so forgive me um but yeah i just um i feel really i feel really safe in shanghai alone actually even before going back to <clears throat> back to school you know life is very normal here um starbucks restaurants bars it's all open the only difference is people walk down the street wearing masks and um you have your temperature check that's the only kind of difference um and so like i was saying earlier for us was for a bit of a um kind of backstory most people because we were on chinese new year holidays uh, most of our student community and staff community were away on holiday and whilst we were away uh, we got the news that you know covid had come to shanghai and we weren't well basically the fco said not to travel to china so we were all told not to come back and anybody that was in china basically left <clears throat> just made a quick getaway with their families so we had this really interesting e-learning experience where you know, I only had my phone with me, no laptop, having to do lessons, um, live lessons online, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, when the time came about six, eight weeks later to travel back to Shanghai, sorry. <clears throat> We're not going to treat it as a cough, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, right. I know that's the worry. That you have. Um, <clears throat> when we traveled back to Shanghai, I mean, it was rigorous getting through airports. Um, <clears throat> most of our friends um the day we traveled we got in just in time but within 48 hours 
they anybody that landed in Shanghai um, got taken by a government bus, police escorted to a test center, being put in these hotels, swabbed. You were put in a hotel room until the, the test results came through. And if you were negative, then you got police escorted on a bus back to your compound. And every single person had that. So every single person that came in got tested. And basically um, within that week, they shut the Chinese borders because actually there were so many imported cases coming in. They just couldn't deal with it. So they just closed the Chinese borders and they haven't opened since, which is why we've got part of our school community still missing staff and students. And one of our um, friends, he, he, him and his two children came out as positive, um, which was just horrendous because, you know, they were seven and nine and they got taken in different directions. Um, sorry, but... I just, sorry, Helen, can I just, I, 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 this sounds really, so just to be clear on that, effectively, because of the positive result, effectively, what happened there was the family was separated, right? Yeah, so all three of them were positive. But interestingly, his seven and nine year old had zero symptoms, nothing, 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 nothing at all. And he, when he, so he'd ironically gone to the UK to, you know, he'd been in China, for China was staying for Chinese New Year, but because this all broke out, he quickly got his kids when the FCO said, don't go to China and went back to the UK to try and seek a safe place. Um, ended up being there for seven weeks. And when he, just about 10 days before he flew, he said that he did feel a bit under the weather. So he rang a doctor in the UK um, to get some advice. And the doctor said that like, no way is that um, coronavirus, not a chance, like you're absolutely fine. And he did feel fine by this point to travel. He just wanted to check. So he, um, yeah, they took a flight, got put in a hotel room and then they got kept in that hotel room for about 30 hours or something. And then they finally came, someone came to the room and said, you're positive. So we have to take you away. Um, and they initially for the first, now obviously he wasn't going to know this at the time, but for the first 36 hours, they were separated. The kids were taken to one hospital. He was taken to another hospital, which was, you know, all of our fears of coming back. Um, and in those hospitals, they were like secondary testing centers just to make sure that the test really was accurate and they actually were positive. Um, and it came through that they were positive still. Um, now, luckily he managed to talk to, um, the authorities, if you like, and, very long story short, they were reunited and had to go to um, a proper, like the hospital where they then treat them and they were put in this hospital room. They weren't really allowed to leave the room unless they went for CT scans or whatever. And they were under the most, uh, it, you know, they were examined every single day. And even when they came out negative, six days later, all three of them were negative. Um, they weren't allowed to leave for two weeks. And he said that he got really angry and really frustrated, but actually now that it's all done, He's like, goodness, what an amazing system. They just really took care of the fact that they were absolutely of no threat to anybody else. Well, I, kind of, I kind of want to pause on that point because I, I sort of promised myself I wouldn't make any political statements in here. But I think a lot of the themes I'm hearing from you is that the, the, the Chinese approach is clearly to do with test, track and trace. I think would that be a fair thing and i think in the uk what we're finding is and again I, I i'm not going to put my political stance on this but i think what we're seeing in the uk is it's a bit more accidental than that in the sense that i, I guess there's three possible management processes of this one is that we just let people get it two is that we sort of develop some kind of therapeutic or vaccine to it and the third one is that we test track and trace and it sounds like china's clearly gone for that one I, then i want to bring you back to the point that you made which is that you feel safe and I find yeah. that, again, I don't want to make a political statement, but I find that interesting. Mm. Yeah. I just, because you just know that barely anyone can slip through the system. You yeah. know, if there's anything, they're, they're in and, and they're tested and they're in a fever centre and they're in a hospital. And it's just taken so, so, so seriously. Mm. Um, and, you know, this guy that I was talking about, he said that he went through just talking about it this morning and he was saying that he went through a few days where he felt really extremely extremely angry and regrudging of um, the system here because he was like you know if I was back in the UK right now you know I wouldn't be cooped up in this small room for 14 days yeah. I would be just self-isolate at home and I'd be trusted with that but he said you know later on he kind of came to a realization of just you know they were in this it was apparently very five-star it was really beautiful in amongst all the the craziness of being cooped up but 
actually the length there's a lot of a lot of volunteers helping with all these test centers and everything and just mm. trying to keep the city safe um it's just people working just ludicrous hours to to do it um and i think i think that's why i feel so safe because just just you can't you just can't slip through the net um yeah, that's good so that's good. um in a school context so definitely I didn't, I didn't have any worries about going back to school. Um, That's really good to hear. I, and, I, and I think I could be wrong, and I don't want to misrepresent people, but I, I feel that teachers right now don't currently have that feeling, and that's something that... I, know the boys. Yeah. I mean, look at this, like this guy's two kids. They never, to the final day, ever showed a symptom. Mm. Not one symptom. And yet they were positive. And yeah. they were positive for all that time, you know? Um, so... And I, and I think that's the that's the scary part, isn't it? That yeah, it is. Carry it. Um, and uh, and when there's not any not enough testing and there's not enough, I don't know. It's a. I, I absolutely get it. I absolutely get yeah. it. And I think I would feel exactly the same. Maybe if I was. Well, I, th I think yeah. what we're saying there is that it, uh, there'll be people out there feel worried and stressed. I think the thing we want to say, I guess, is that don't worry about worrying. Don't be. Don't don't stress that you're stressed don't don't stress that you're feeling something that other people aren't feeling and don't worry that maybe your fears are irrational i think if anything is rational right now it's to have apprehension and concern about what's going to play out so i think that's normal uh, Gemma atkins comment here she says just come in late where does helen teach so um i'll answer that but uh, feel free to add something onto this helen so so uh, helen teaches in um the dulwich college in shanghai padong and and um helen has a background in teaching extensively in uh, in british schools in west london also teach taught in international schools in italy and now teaches is, is lead pe um in 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 shanghai and it's my understanding it's a lovely school by the way i've been to dulwich college in the uk i haven't been to your one yet you must invite me sometime um and we've got it and, and just jumping back and i want to come to classroom next but i want to just jump back here laurel Lee Payne, thank you for reposting this laurel Lee. laurel Lee Payne asked during the lockdown phase when you were doing the remote teaching and i know for you it was particularly challenging because you weren't actually up, you were neither in the uk nor in china at this particular time but she's asked what percentage of your students do you believe did any practical activity in their homes and apartments related to what you asked them or set them to do so what what sort of take-up rates do you do you perceive now that you were getting um so we um we ended up moving to live pe lessons um, because we did we did e-learning for so long you know it kicked in at the end of January mm. um, so we'd been going for quite a while I think in the in the early stages um, I the year sevens were pretty good so we had a, a Microsoft team we didn't take our own classes we we had a team for year seven a team for year eight a team for Got year nine it. we put different members of staff in charge of different teams partly because we were all scattered around the world um and our students were scattered around the world and we were all on different time zones and um you know it was really complicated um so initially we were we were really trying to be extremely communicative with them we were setting all sorts of different projects um the year sevens were pretty engaged but i mean still you know 50 percent at most i'd say and then the numbers just dwindled as you went through the year groups um year nine were terrible uh and yeah those, year, those pesky year pesky. nines that's an awkward <laughs> age isn't it they're so annoying <laughs> yeah, absolutely absolutely and yeah year 10 to 13 i mean they just didn't really exist um apart from our gcse groups um and then after i'm not even really sure which we've been i think we did 14 14 weeks of e-learning before we went to went back to school something like that it's all become a bit muddled now all kind of blurs um but we eventually moved into um, the whole school went into live lessons and um so for my gcse lessons it was live theory lessons online and you had to do it in accordance with the shanghai timetable so no matter where you were around the world if you're in the uk and you had a period one lesson you were just up super early um, and there was an expectation really that the students needed to be there um etc but we went live with our key stage three and key stage four core PE um, lessons in the end. Um, and, you know, year seven, we were getting, we were getting a much higher number when it went to live lessons. Um, so we were getting, we've, we've only got 120 students in year seven, which I know is nothing compared to a lot of um, state schools or other big schools. Um, but we were probably getting around 80 to 90 students out of 120. It's very I good. Mean, 
we battled to get their cameras on because it's a policy in our school that they have to have their cameras on uh, we would really battle with that so we you know for all we know half of them just logged in and turned the camera off and went who knows beauty of e-learning um year eight we were getting maybe 40 percent of the um of the attendance wise and then again it just started to dwindle but because it became it then became mandatory for them to do PE lessons um so the whole timetable was basically in full flow in live lessons and um it just took a little while for PE to become mandatory um so when it finally did we then had a tracker and for every two lessons missed by students we had to email parents and gotcha. obviously like normal the emails made a bit of a difference in terms of attendance um but we now have a bit of an issue that we have gone back to school, but we've still got students stuck abroad and we've yeah. still got students in Shanghai that don't want to come back to school. Yeah. And we have to provide a provision for all those things. So how are you doing that? Because I think that's one of the fears that teachers will have. They'll go back and they might have a 50% cohort of your 10s or whatever. So how are you, how are you providing both at school and at home then, Helen? So um, for, for PE, um, it's, like for basically for other subjects what they're doing is they their, their lesson still runs on a zoom call yeah so it's all of the grading so they're still on a zoom call so the students oh, yeah. that are in high will still zoom in and be part of that lesson they're just not sat behind a desk um, that lesson then um, anybody from abroad can also zoom in um, and then for those that it's really not convenient for their time zone it just gets recorded and they they're expected to can i just up. Can I just clarify on that one, Helen? So the teacher will be in the classroom behind the desk, which, I, as I understand, is a rule in China. You can't go in front of the desk. So the teacher will be delivering, they'll be explaining whatever, and that, that lesson is both being delivered to kids in the room that are on Zoom with them and also kids that could be anywhere in the world, effectively. Yep, 100%. Yeah, wow. that's what's happening. I mean, we've actually got the crazy situation that you guys won't have this, but the teachers that are stuck abroad, they're having to still conduct their lessons. So they Zoom in. They get put on the projector and <laughs> then there is an extra adult put in the room to, so we've got this like cover situation going on so there's an adult in the room the class are there and the teachers on the screen so you know our, our school really i mean fair play to the it department and how they've done all of this and yeah. you know kind of trouble shooting so much stuff um it's 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 quite weird i still find it weird like our science department is very diminished in terms of teachers abroad and it's so weird to walk along the corridor you just hear these booming voices kind of coming through the speaker system and also the teachers there on the screen and oh it's just it's, it must be such weird teaching for that teacher honestly uh, but anyway so for us in a PE context we obviously can't have a member of pe zooming in to conduct the lesson it's just impossible we also can't really film our lesson you know to upload it. it just none of it makes sense our subject became um a little bit more creative and i was allowed to be able to kind of run with it a little bit more so one of our key senior school uh, pe teachers is actually stuck in canada mm -hmm. um so at the moment she is now in charge of running the online programs we've set up a separate microsoft teams team called global pe and we've got a year seven to nine group and a year 10 to 13 group she runs um, a live session with each group, which if they can get to it, great. She tracks it all because it is mandatory for year seven to 12 to attend yeah. PE. Um, obviously, you know, those that are watching it at a later date, it is obviously harder to track. Um, and she is, um, yeah, she's just basically accountable for all those students and reaching out to them. So if she doesn't see them, she's going to be reaching out to them and being the, the communicator. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know, it's so dependent on the situations with the schools, how big your departments are, I don't know whether someone could take on that role of being the person that looks yeah. after, because particularly in a PE context, you know, you can't, you can't just film your lesson and upload it, it just doesn't work because they obviously can't replicate half that stuff at home, or if you feel like it is a lesson that could be replicated, maybe you could set up an iPad and film it and upload it. For us, I feel like it's about provision. And because we're a private school as well, you know, I was saying to you earlier, our students pay a, 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 an astonishing amount of money every year to come to our school. So, you know, it really is about provision, uh, both in appeasing parents, but also, you know, you want to do it morally as well for students. You want to be able to provide something for them. So it's it's kind of a bit of a bit of both going on there. But um, yeah, I mean, there's been some interesting feedback from our students that haven't come back to school, um, and I this is a kind of generic um statement that they're finding it quite challenging to see 
all the students in school and they're not there now hard. yeah mm -hmm. so that's something to maybe be aware of um yeah. if you end up filming lessons and uploading it particularly if it's students that are in you know they obviously can come to school because you guys aren't trapped abroad they could come to school but their parents aren't letting them or something that could just add extra sort of i don't know extra yeah. emotion to the I think that's one of the great things you, you've raised here, Helen, is the importance of kind of moral and emotional support for students. Maybe that is even at the pinnacle of what we need to do right now. I want to bring you to that sort of practical, well, I want to bring you to that classroom environment, Helen. I mean, by the way, I was going to say, we were worried we wouldn't have half an hour to talk about here. We've gone for an hour. We've barely scratched the surface. Amazing, really. Um, <laughs> But um, I just want to talk, there'll be a lot of uh, colleagues uh, watching this and watching this into the future who who teach in a classroom. They're, they're used to having their whiteboard at the front, they're teaching, they're then setting group work, they're moving around, they're, they're leaning over kids. And, you know, that, that's what we're all accustomed to. We've all taught in classrooms. We've all done, I mean, how, what are the rules and how is that playing out in your classroom at the moment, Helen? Yeah, I mean, um, I haven't done a great deal of, because I've had the, year 11 GCSE group someone else yeah. has got the year 10 so they've um they've left at the moment um so I haven't had the pleasure of doing this archaic teaching in the in the classroom but I do I do have a tutor group and they came back today mm. and you know it definitely is it's it's just very different there's no there's no other way you know we're so um it's so ingrained in us to be so keen aesthetic in the classrooms and it and you know it's one of those things that i would almost feel guilty if i was just sat behind a desk and somebody walked by or saw me do that you must be like yeah, oh no you know like it's just so ingrained that we should be moving around and interacting and you know the kids shouldn't be just sat like exam format um but it just is what it is and i think that um i know that i'm going to because it's, today was my first day of being in a classroom you know i'm going to be trialing um creative things with these guys i'm going to just test my own creativity um try and think of activities that i used to do with tutor groups and and look at how i can do that um, in the context of what we're allowed to do and try and make it fun and engaging for them again and um, you know i'm even going to do obviously i don't know if you guys have to do this but we're i spoke to them today about maybe we should have a bit, a bit of fun with the temperature checks maybe we should create like a leadership board and actually <laughs> every day they can create the rule so the rule is it might be right whoever if anybody hits 36.6 they get three points you know and we'll like take all the temperatures and we'll, we'll just create something fun out of it and maybe um, one day we'll do whoever has the lowest temperature gets three points or i don't know like i just get close to them because i'm bored i'm bored a bit already and i only did one day of the, the tutor group um logging their temperatures i just think you know what we could probably make this a bit more fun um so i think but, it's just but you you can't leave the desk right you have to stay behind that right helen and and they're sat they're sat in they're sat in effectively an exam desk format right i mean you know yeah like you know one is sat particularly when you've got the the tables where they'd normally sit too like one's in the middle and one's at the side mm -hmm. Um, so it is, it is like that. Now, you know, I have to admit, I haven't really, um, I, I was very aware today of not moving around the classroom. I don't, that's what we were told when we had this staff briefing you know, three weeks ago, we were told, you know, you really, you're allowed to move from your desk to the whiteboard, but essentially there's no yeah. moving around the room. And, um, that just isn't a thing how, how strictly that is being stuck to, I assume it is, but um, I couldn't tell you for definite. I haven't really wandered around the school um, extensively during um, the, the, the classroom uh, time, but you know, it is a, it is a rule and regulation. So I would imagine it's, it is being um, adhered to. That's great. And, um, and Helen, there's a couple of things I kind of want to, in some ways I kind of want to summarize, uh, but I want to, I want to read a couple of things back to you that I think I've picked, that I've picked up from you that I think, uh, um, that, that are really important from what you described a couple of almost sound bites. So forgive me for if it misrepresent you, but I, I sort of want to read them back to you. And they're things that I feel that having listened to you today, that I think are absolutely critical for people out there to, to hear. And these are direct quotes from you, Helen, they're just little phrases, but you said, you said, for example, we're going to do the best of what we can. I think that's a great phrase that people can latch on to. And it's something that colleagues can reflect on that you, you, you can't be everything to all people. And, the, and we can do the best of what we can, given the circumstances that are presented to us. You all said early on, you said, make it fun. And I think that's really important with these children coming out of this lockdown environment. They're not going to have seen each other for a long time. They're probably going to have been quite sad quite frequently. And I think that's something, again, 
ask, use the phrase be sensitive. And I think, again, that's really important, you know, be sensitive to what they're, not that we're never not, ever not, but, you know, I think that's a really important thing to remind, um, right, remind colleagues of. And I really think they're worth sort of drilling home um, to people and just maybe reminding people that these things are kind of normal given these services. And I had one more, which I've, um, which I've, I've now lost, but I had it here as well. You said it's such a learning curve and it's normal to experience the start of this and not be perfect i think people need to be reminded here that not getting not nailing it first time is going to be really really what it is and i'm just going to use one last one as something probably we all say quite often you just said there it is what it is that's what it is and we'll do the best that we can within that environment and, and helen's a bit of feedback i'd give to you i think you're going to be surprised at how many people are going to latch onto this and listen to this i think you, you may be getting some questions coming your way i think so oh, I'm completely open to that. Like, I really, really, really welcome um, any questions or any contact, whatever, you know, 100%, like, please do. Okay, that's great. And we've had a couple of last comments, just to Stefan Lewis. Thank you for your comments, Stefan. We'll be able to watch this back or, or have a link to it. Yes, you will. Uh, it will. It will be immediately available on the Facebook page as a recording. You can watch it there, but I'm also going to post it later on to YouTube and various other places. And we had a question from Leah White. Leah, I believe you're, um, correct if I got this wrong, Leah, but I think you're an international school in Spain. I'm pretty sure that's that's correct. I think we work with two Leah Whites is why I'm hesitating. So I just want to be sure. And Leah's question was quite specific. Do you have any tips for live lessons? You said that maybe on with your sevens you could even get sort of um 75 percent attendance what what would is there anything there's a tip helen that you and i completely acknowledge you might say i'm not the expert but but what what would are there any tips that you would give for get, getting um getting opt-in uh, um it's a, really, it's a really tricky one i mean listen, I'm not going to be like, we've got quite diligent students at our school at the end of the day, you know, that that's, we shouldn't be taking credit for getting so many students online that like they're, they're really diligent and, um, you know, they, they've been told that they're meant to be there. So um, I don't know if you guys are able to do a, I don't know if a tracking system really works and whether the, you know, the, the reach out to parents and even if it's just gentle emails, like, you know, we would really like to see your child. We haven't seen them for X number of lessons. If you have a bit of a, yeah. um, a rotor of that so whether you, you you come up with an agreement like for us it was a school policy that if your student misses or well, if they miss one lesson we're meant to email the student and then if it's two we're meant to email the parent with the student cc'd in um which can be a huge amount of work um so i understand that particularly you've got big cohorts but you know if you can um if you're if there's any way of doing that the sort of chasing part um even if it's just a sort of um a kind email you know like just reminding the um the, the, the reasons and the um, the gains that you're going to get from being part of the the P online program, mm. you know it might it might get another two students to come along. Who knows? No, um, it is frustrating, um, but I think yeah, there's 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 really no magic. We we did a lot of variety of activities. We we ended up doing because we did a lot of online learning that wasn't live lessons to begin with it was a lot of kind of project work and really trying to rally them up we did like step count challenges and asking them to post their pictures of their fitbits or whatever online and we were giving them x number of points for which bracket their um step fell into and we were sharing with them all the different ways that they could work out at home online subscriptions that were free we were just trying to share as much as we could with them and then upload ourselves doing some videos which i know is what so many schools are doing there's just there's so much amazing stuff out there um so i guess it's just you know ju just keep it going with it and I, I think the communication may work but we do we are really lucky we do have a very um yeah. intelligent set of students so, well, um, they, they also represent they also represent you helen so their diligence also represents the work that you do with them and i think there's an interesting point there about division of labor a couple of times you've sort of made reference to that with regard to different people taking on different roles in your case because of geographically being distant effectively maybe if you've got someone in the department who is limited in terms of what they can do on the camera or, or live teaching maybe that's where that division of labor goes that person can become yeah, slightly maybe. more administrative maybe sure but that that actually really worked because it worked for us because we all had different constraints and um like for example when i came back to shanghai it was um you know it was great we had a childminder to look after our toddler so we could finally actually get on with some work but actually the nature of conducting a live lesson 
was really tricky for me personally because of my circumstances at home you know my toddler would try and climb all over me and just would just <laughs> bang my laptop and like it was just absolutely impossible my GCSE theory lessons were not a problem because I could do that in the small confines of our bedroom um, but to do a practical yoga session or a dance session or this that and the other became so tricky so we all just took on completely different um, things that were possible to us and I think that you know looking at your departments and looking at the different um, you know things that people can offer up and um, distributing out everything sort of based on everyone's personal circumstances because that that is what it is um, well, that's what that's what management is right I mean that's 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 that, that's maybe the peak of management Helen and, and I, I just want to I want to sort of bring us to conclusion and a couple of things I want to say to you look I think first of all from from the community of PT teachers in this specific group where we're live right now a massive thank you to you I think you I don't know if you realize yet how valuable this is to people but I can tell you now that people are worried here and I think what you've described is going to be a very affirming and supportive thing we've got messages coming in from Dave Curtis from Phil Mace from Matt Hammond's all say massively helpful and I hope you value that because it's really I think you know you didn't have to do this and there's me badgering you and oh yeah Helen will you come on the call and lots of people say no to that and I really appreciate this and Jack Dandol are the same uh, the second thing I was going to say Helen I wanted to return to what I said right at the start is about your positivity your enthusiasm your affability these are characteristics I've seen in you although we've never met in the flesh as it were we've spoken numerous times on email and online and various things and something I notice about you that I think will go a massive way for many colleagues right now and maybe the PE teaching community is the is the exact pinnacle of this is that affability and enthusiasm I think Helen you, you represent that brilliantly and also from from us as a business as well Helen as you know I've probably never said this to you in person we really appreciate what a brilliant um, colleague and client if I may use that term um, you've been for us and we genuinely appreciate you and genuinely appreciate the work um, that you do okay I appreciate your work a lot as well, trust me. <laughs> <laughs>